Kajing Jia Sha Twet, Badangshan, Ban Kem Yaki Saungur Kinong Shong Shnong Kajatalong Riboy District, Kabodan Hakapur, Bad Kajala Assam, the Giborpunyat District, West Garbi Anglong, Hadin Chisnam Tam Namarki Mukodama Persha Eki, Hakabaya Day, Bagajing Don Kitip and Prapat Ba Yaw Maunong Rim, Bolabu, the Kakarbi Anglong Autonomous Council, Kataka Kat Artery Unai Wing, Araja Arpuar, Kalapun Long Yaw Nong Tao An Ka Congress, Namahati Constituency, Uba Charles Margar, Ban Wanra, the Commotion, Hakasni Balai Jogadorbar Mangtinka, Hakaying Dorbat Tao an ka jilla ha ka arpo tarik rumphang arja arpu sao banya tai halor ki jing e ba ki nong song snong khapot ki kandu na ka por sha ka por kiladon bun ngot ki khot ki play simbanta ka te ki jing tai ha swa bo mentri rang ba ka jilla u konrat ke sangma un ai ka jubab ka pakanthop ya ki khot ka ying ki ba ki constituency jong ki hi ki kedop ya ki snong khapot om tang harilom khasi jaintia henry wat harilom garu ru ki ba kandu jing e na ka por sha ka por na lor ki wei pan Uba Charles Margar haba wanra ekeni ka mat yatai ulakran baki bor asam kim khen snap yaki kular ban om kem shu ekeni ka saungot hadien ka jing pen bai hadien ka te ka jing pen pra maunong rim Mr Speaker sir I remember there was a meeting on the 15th December 2023 20, where senior IS officers IPS including our DGP from Meghalaya, both Meghalaya and Assam attended the meeting. After the meeting, everyone were happy with the decision taken by both state Meghalaya and Assam. After the meeting, our DGP from Meghalaya met the villages in Maulosnai outpost and told them that the Assam police neither initiate any legal action nor arrest the offenders. However, the assurance made by the DGP Meghalaya, it seems, it seems to hold no value presently as the Assam government is still pursuing legal action against our villages. Which is evident from the fact that the case has been cheated and the court has issued warrant of arrest to our four people, that is Mr. Walking Linshan, Mr. Proming Surong, Mr. Priling Mensong, and Mr. Dunbok Nongsko. Regarding warrant arrest to our people, sir, after, after getting all the information, I went to Maulosnai to meet a headman from the border area. And again on the 12th of this month, I went along with border magistrate from Ribohoi district to Maulosnai outpost to meet all the headmen from the border areas on this matter. Mr. Speaker, sir, on the same day, I met the deputy commissioner of Ribohoi district to speed up this matter at the earliest. Next day, sir, I also met our chief secretary and also I met the deputy chief minister since our chief minister, he was out of station. I thank the honorable chief minister, deputy chief minister and also the Chief Secretary for the proactive step taken by them. I got the information that our Chief Minister spoke to the Chief Minister of Assam and provided all the details to him and also a Chief Secretary to the Chief Secretary of Assam. But sir, one more thing that I want to bring to your kind notice is 
that the Assam police every day, even yesterday, sir, I got the, a phone call that the Assam police continue to patrol Akasi villages, which has caused great inconveniences and insecurity to the general public. Therefore, sir, I once again request our Honorable Chief Minister and Deputy Chief Minister in charge Home Police to kindly speed up this matter and make sure that safety and security to our people, especially to our four people, as mentioned above, are redressed at the earliest. Mr. Speaker, sir, coming to developmental works, I feel very sad. I feel very sad to say that many developmental works, like school buildings, community hall, Anganwadi Center, footbridge, etc., has been forcefully stopped by the forest department, by Assam police, and the Garbi Anglong Autonomous Council, which has become a roadblock to the developmental works meant for the areas falling under and which is contradictory to the talk between the two states. Mr. Speaker, sir, unfortunately, whenever our state tried to carry, to carry out developmental works in the area, the Assam government has always stopped the works. But whenever the state of Assam carry out any developmental works in the area, our state has never blocked or stopped such works. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, sir, as a local representative, I humbly request our Honorable Chief Minister to kindly intervene this matter at the earliest and also to make sure that all developmental works coming from our state as well from the central will be implemented smoothly for the benefit of a bill of people who stay in this area. <coughs> Lastly, Mr. Speaker, sir, one problem that our people face in this area from time to time, that is the tax collection for broomstick made by the Karbi Anglong Autonomous Council, collected by the poor Jaru Mahal under Um Jatini Range, West Karbi Anglong. This is a big problem that our people face in this area, sir. I have with me the vehicle charge. For the Bolero pickup, 2,000 kg of broomstick, they will charge 15,000. For the Bolero 4x4, 1,800 kg, they will charge 1,300, 13,500. 13, For the LP truck, 
12,000 kg, they will charge 90,000 sir. And for the 909 truck, 9,000 kgs, they will charge 67,500 sir. By collecting taxation, tax collection from our farmers in this area, sir, I know that it will be it will be affected to a poor farmer, poor farmer in this area. Mr. Speaker, sir, this is my second time to inform this August House about the problem of our farmer in this area. Tax collection for broomstick by the Karbi Anglong Autonomous Council. Mr. Speaker, sir, I once again request our leader of the House, our Honorable Chief Minister, to kindly take this matter seriously and make sure that we can stop the Kabi Anglong Autonomous Council for the tax collection of Rumstick in this area. Mr. Speaker, sir, once again, I request our Chief Minister and his cabinet to kindly speed up this matter. We all know that now is the season of broomsticks so that our people will not suffer. Nakaliang uba sustena sotun unong tau an ke NPP na jirang uloong bagajing tau yagi regional committee penbeit port kadai kasin jam ban hap ai jing yero e kasorkar. Uloong ru bahaswa kasorkar MDA1 kijing ujor sha ban ben yagi kap port kijurba nolor kijing duna ki kam kentiu yaka roi kapar. I would like to request the government under the leadership of our Honorable CM, Sir Conrad K. Sangma, for the second term as the Chief Minister, that the government should carry out more and more developments in the border areas, especially the disputed areas, not only for my constituency, but for the border areas all along the whole state of Meghalaya. Sir, as to note here, we have seen and we have noticed, even though talk is still going on, and we have different, um, we have many meetings with the Assam counterparts. And we have noticed that the Assam government, they are electrifying the people who are residing in the borders from the part of the government of Assam. So I would like to put before the House to you, Mr. Speaker, sir, that different developments, be it electricity, be it road, be it water supply, or whatever, that more concentration or development be reached out to the people who are residing in the borders. So to mention out here, like I remember in the previous years, The people who are in the uniform, the police department, I noticed that, and I come to know in us information also, that Megalia, my constituency, when we go, going to Assam, when we crossed the Bonihat Bridge, to the right side, 
while going down it is assam and to the left is meghalaya as information the police department in the previous years any incident that happened from bonihat to jerobat it will be under the control of meghalaya police and then from jerobat down to kanapara it is under the assam but what according to the information collected that the transport department of assam now they used to come up to banihat to detect take out take the vehicles for parking in the jurisdiction of megala so some of these issues uh, which i feel that any of the station like the outpost police station or be it edicam i would like to put some advice to the government especially the home police that we need strong police police officers in the outpost in the police station for the security and the strengthening of the manpower so that the people who are residing in the borders they feel the security and also sir to come out again with which have i've already mentioned the different developments so i'd like to request once again to the mda to government that more and more developments to please consider for the border conferency and so that the people who are residing in the border before we come out with the solution to resolve the border problems the border problems between assam and meghalaya so that we can feel that the people of who are residing in meghalaya in the border areas they feel that they are the people of meghalaya so so once again sir i would like to thank the honorable member who has brought this uh, motion and i hope that with the wisdom and with the hard work of the honorable chief minister i hope that more and more development we are getting in the border areas unong thau an ke npp na kharkuta urupot movement ula ang baki don kishnong khapot na constituency jong u ki la pandan kam da ki voters id card jong ka assam but bon ki nong song song kim kwa sho bandan sab megalaya madam the few places that uh, it's include in the past phase of the border area settlement less like doeni chigande tapolfara etc they are in they are included in the meghalaya but my surprise is that the assam government they withdraw all the developmental activities if surrender their voter id to the assam government and the school teachers also they have gone because it's falls under meghalaya now reside those people residing in that villages they were nowhere 
even part of Meghalaya also, voter ID is still there, looking for the voter IDs and different developmental activities. They are nowhere now. The places like uh, Garu Hill side, like Penchimari, the Assam government also, they claim that this is the part of Assam. But people residing out there, they strictly resisted that we are part of Meghalaya. And they also surrender all their belongings, voters' ID and, and different documents. So Assam government, they withdraw all their development activities. Again, same thing is happening. Meghala government also not interested because this is a border dispute and they are also nowhere. Other villages like, like uh, Kasumari is very close to Karkuta. It has one timber bridge. When the Assam government came to convert that timber bridge to RCC, the uh, department, PWD department, they came to geotech. But in the G Google map, it shows that as a part of Meghalaya. So that very particular road also abundant. As a local MLA of that area, I have to help them and the uh, road and the timber bridge repaired by us from the Meghalaya side. But that particular area also disputed. Meghalaya also claimed that is a part of Meghalaya. Assam government also claimed that is a part of Assam. Nagalia Unong Tau An United Democratic Party UDP Namokaya constituency uba New York ki sungo uloong bagi bor na Assam kila wan bansna biang yakwai ka khardop krong khajna mukro kasnong ka bala du a sangot kirang ba na ka jing sendret kuli ki bor pulen bor ki bor pahara khlao ka Assam hau nai wing jong snam arja apuar nolor ka jing dawa ban ajing rap pisa su si ki long ying jong ki sangot uloong ba ka boarding electric ka secondary school ru kim dan hakate ka snong I would just like to bring the notice to the Honorable CM because the same issue like the Honorable Member has just mentioned, the illegal collection of money by the Assam government official or maybe the disconsul official. As we all know and as, as we all heard about Mukro. Even the, res the residents of Mukro also, they are facing the same problems. Huh? A year has just passed when a very sad incident happened in Mukro village. And all the incident, incident, the incident happened, it's all because of the forest gate that was located at around three to four kilometers away from Mukro village. And just day before yesterday, I got a call from the villagers of Mukro village. They informed me that now, again, the government of Assam, officially they didn't open the big building that was there, but just in front of the forest check gate, they opened a small, they set up a small new check gate. Sir. And in this very check gate, what is the purpose? The purpose of this check gate is just to collect money from the villagers of Mukro who went to their paddy field to carry firewood, to carry charcoal, to carry wood for their construction, to carry the agricultural products. And no vehicle which passed through this road has been spared. I met the Honorable CM so many times and I apprised him that there's a great need to remove this check gate because all of the paddy field, all of the place which the people of Mukro used to cultivate their broomstick, their ginger, it is located beyond this check gate. So whenever they carry the, their product, they cannot avoid this check gate. They have to come through this poignantly. 
And while coming to this point, no vehicle has been spared. They, for each and every agricultural product that they carry from their land, which they cultivate, all of them they have to pay. So, sir, this is a very serious issue, issue sir. We should do something and we should make sure that no such kind of check gate should be set up in between this, I mean in between Mukro and Mukoilom village. This is very important, sir. So that the people of Mukro will feel safe and secure whenever they go to their paddy field or to their place of cultivation. And we all have seen the, their life, their economic activities. People in Mukro are very poor. And even the infrastructure that was there also, a lot needs to be done. So, sir, I would like to, ma'am, I would like to bring to the notice of the Honorable Chief Minister. Urgently, what we need, sir, there are some few localities in Mukro village which are yet to be electrified, sir. And Mukro village, being one of the of a big village in my constituency, it consists not less than 600 households in Mukro. And the sad part is that till now there's not even a single secondary school in Mukro village. So people from Mukro they have to travel all the way from Mukro till Barato, or some of them to Jawai to Shillong. And this led to the drop out of so many students in Mukro village because most of them, they cannot afford to send their children outside for, for their secondary school studies. And also, sir, I would like to appreciate, sir, after the incident happened, so many efforts, I mean so many assistance that has been provided by the government to the family of these five victims. But, sir, I would like to urge you, if you can kindly consider to provide some more financial support for this family. We have seen after their father died in the, in the incident, now the mother is the only sole provider of that household. So it's going to be very tough and very challenging for a single mother to provide for a family of four to five children. So, ma'am, through you, I would like to urge our Honorable CM, sir, to kindly consider this. I would like to request you, sir, to kindly take a special consideration for expediting the proposal of this Katkasla Mojam Jikindeng. Why I raise this very important road, sir? Last time I've been to Mojam village, at the time when there is, when there is, when the dispute is going on in this Kanduli site, so when there is a dispute in Kanduli site, so it spread to all over the border area, and even it affect Mojam village, which is very far from this Kanduli village. So in the process of all the road that the people used to travel, the Panar people used to travel for their market, for their day-to-day -day activities. Most of the good road that they used to travel, it has to pass at some point of time through a Karbi village. And when this incident happened in, Katka, in and when this incident happened, sir, all the road that the Panar people used to travel, the Karbi people, they used to dug a hole and used to block it with road, I mean block it with stone, and they cut some wood to block the road so that the people cannot pass through this road. And in this process, sir, I'm very sad to know that they informed me, the villagers from Mojam village informed me that one young boy who's very ill at that time and they're supposed to take him to a hospital but while they thought of going through that road which they used to travel from time to time they found out 
that it was only dug out, it was only blocked by the Karbi people, and they want to travel to this Katkaslamo Jamjikindeng Road. But this road is only possible through winter time. So in this process, uh, unfortunately, that young boy died without reaching the hospital. This might happen again. So that's why, sir, I would like to urge you kindly look into the matter and expedite the process of this Katkasla Mojem Trikindeng Road, sir. Because if you, if you are able to, pro, to construct this Katkasla Mojem Trikindeng Road, all of the problem that was being faced by the Panar people, maybe up to 60-70% of the problem will be solved. They will get a good road to travel, and if there's some problem arise between Karbi and Panar people, at least they can run. As of now, they cannot run. If there is a problem, that means they have to stay there and they have to face the problem on their own. They cannot run because there is no road, good road, that is connecting this Panar village. Undang tahu an klem seng naram rajer ngam u Remington G Moment ulo ang. Bagi don santeli kisnong kibo one pie sa kamigelaya na kijaka kapur bahap haga constituency bat don ru kisnong kabalo penrong kertangi kinong song kisnong ban yo yek electoral photo identity card na megelaya. Ulo ang baka scheme JJM haga tan langpi kasa pensange haki pulet asam bolo kentu yo menteri rangba banyak keran halor kene bolo ang ru bad don ki skul ki ba amdan no hikai bad kene ka dei ka pasngok ya do kata kata but another problem that we have faced as our report moment had written uh, they have already given all these villages but now the moment MOU has signed after that they have shifted the teachers to the asam now in first is still there, but no more teachers. Now, since they are nearby my village, they are always coming to my village and asking to appoint the teachers like this. No? Uh, uh, I advise them to wait for some time. I'll discuss with the chief minister. And then another one, Tangkula village also included in Meghalaya, previously in Assam, purely Assam, but now uh, they had been enrolled in the election. And they had got that election idea so. But those Balkam and Shigendi and Doini still to be registered, still to be enrolled in Meghalaya. I don't know the rules exactly, but one village Tankulai had been enrolled in Meghalaya now they started. But those four villages start yet registered and then every development schemes from Assam, they have stopped and they have, uh, they have not done anything. So they are, since they are my Nearby my village, they always coming every Sunday to my village and to me and asking some help. Even road also they are asking. So these are the problems again. Again, uh, in our another problem. Now we have regional committee that we have formed in Meghalaya side. Our leader, the chairman, uh, Sir Paul Lingdom, and previously Gohalpona, Santipur, Larubama, and Ginangdong and Amrikan, all villages are also in Meghalaya. But 2013, I think, that uh, those, there's no, as Karlingdo was the uh, DC of West Kashis, in his time, all villages had been deleted. But last, that we are in the regional committee, the regional committee, and some villages are still in the uh, list, I have seen. No? But they want to enroll again. But I have no idea regarding this thing. Uh, though they had been delayed there, but still ID is with them. They are still holding their ID and they want to be in the, uh, they, in Meghalaya again, like this. That was also another problem. And then, in Langpi sector, almost all villages under border dispute, they got JGM scheme money has come, everything uh, is there, but we cannot implement that one. Some contractors went to work, but Assam police had uh, warned them and not to start the work, like they are telling. So they went to DC also. Our DC also insisting that we have already passed uh, under regional committee meeting. So until, unless we get an order from the government side, we cannot start the work. But according to our chief minister that I have talked with him, uh, any central scheme, everything, uh, 
uh, we can start the work but in Assam uh, site forest department also or uh, Assam police also they are asking us not to work the, uh, not to start the work like this this is another problem Umentri Rangba Kajala o Konrad K Sangma haba juba bi jing pen sngo na gi khot khom tam ya ki bana ki constituency ki bakdop ya ki shnong ki badan jing kan at khapot ulo ang bam u hi bat umentri Rangba Kajala Assam u himanta biswa sarma ki dan ki jing kran ban wan ra e ka song sok song sngan ya ki te gi jaka da ka bakubur ba ki pat ba khapot ki mat sibon ki jing e ulo ang Bakumba ka thong na duk ka sarkar MDA1 ha duk menta ka sarkar MDA2 ka dan ban pen bet yo pot usam Kumta Ubu Ekanikaman Hakman Air. As you're aware, sir, that uh, this was an incident where uh, the Reboy district, uh, uh, in the Reboy district area, sir, there was a uh, basically a, there was a report, sorry, that uh, came out from the Deputy Commissioner to us. And uh, in this report that came out from the Deputy Commissioner from Reboy, he mentioned that there was a destruction of a foundation stone erected by the Karbialong Autonomous District Council in Jatalong in Block 2 area. Uh, sir, while we say this, uh, I also would take the opportunity to mention to the honorable member who had raised this, saying that uh, every time Assam, uh, when Meghalaya constructs something, then Assam always uh, uh, intervenes and stops it. Whereas when Assam is constructing something, then Meghalaya doesn't do anything. Uh, so this is not factually correct. There are many occasions in which many works have been stopped by, uh, by Meghalaya, by the Deputy Commissioner, or by the people. And uh, the complaints have come to me from the Honorable Chief Minister of Assam. And we have then amicably resorted, uh, res resorted the issue out. And uh, that is how things go. So there are many cases where Meghalaya, people of Meghalaya, administration, block, sometimes officials, don't allow the works to continue. And this is an issue that keeps going back and forth, uh, some in Assam case and some in Meghalaya case. So another point I would like to mention at this point in time, especially concerning this issue, is that we also need to realize that there is a difference between the administration of Assam government, uh, Meghalaya government, and the Karbialong District Council. So there are a lot of things that Karbialong District Council does but we say government of Assam. These are two different administrations and these are two different autonomous bodies. And hence we need to segregate between that. The reason I'm mentioning that is that while the DGP had mentioned that no case will be filed and Assam government has clearly said that they will not allow this to happen, uh, the DGP was correct. The Assam government did not do uh, anything to it. In fact, the uh, issue and the concern was raised by the, the ranger. The FIR was filed by the ranger of the Karbi Long Autonomous District Council. So this FIR was not launched by government of Assam, but by the ranger of the Karbi Long District Council. And hence, the DGP was correct in saying that the Assam government will not do it. But the Karbi Long, of course, Autonomous District Council was not in that scope. And it's, as I said, it's an autonomous administration, an autonomous council, and they had gone ahead with this. So nonetheless, the case moved forward and obviously there was a rent, uh, uh, you know, a warrant of arrest that was, uh, that was raised. And uh, accordingly, sir, uh, after the information and after the intervention, I should say, and the information that was given by the Honorable Member uh, from Mohati, uh, the Chief Secretary and the Deputy Chief Minister, I was out of station then, had quickly moved into action and uh, the Chief Secretary had written to the uh, Chief Secretary of Assam uh, requesting that uh, the cases against these four individuals may be withdrawn. And uh, based on that, sir, the process and discussions were initiated. And as correctly mentioned by the Honorable Member, I had also personally spoken to the uh, Honorable Chief Minister of Assam, and I had also personally requested him that uh, while these discussions and talks are going on, while we are trying to move forward in trying to find a solution, these kind of incidents only aggravate the situation. And hence, wherever possible, we should try and amicably resolve such issues. And he completely agreed with me. And uh, a very, very positive response was given by him. 
and uh, he said he will look into the matter and uh, we are working on this together and uh, I officially and uh, want to put it on record that uh, we have always uh, seen a very positive response from the government of Assam and uh, especially the Honorable Chief Minister of Assam whenever such issues have come out. And uh, so we also need to realize when we talk um, at uh, this level is that there are many levels of uh, administration, many levels of different officers and the public that are involved in such complicated cases. And therefore, even though maybe talks are going on at our level, micro minor incidents continue to happen. So it's not something that we can 100% avoid because these are obviously uh, human conflict kind of situations and hence we need to deal with them very, very carefully. So while we are working on this uh, to resolve this issue at a larger level and while we're getting the support from Assam government and especially the Honorable Chief Minister of Assam, yes, there could be incidents that happen and whenever such incidents happen, uh, I want to just share with you, Speaker Sir, that we have been able to sit down and uh, resolve and reduce the tension in, um, in different areas and though we are not able to resolve all the problems, but at least we are able to maintain and uh, stop the escalation of the law and order situation and ensure that there is uh, peace in the, in the area. So these kind of talks are continuing and, uh, and we will continue to do that. Sir, I will also just mention that, um, <coughs> so as I said, sir, we are, have received a positive response and uh, though it's a judiciary matter in one way, uh, the Assam government and Honorable Chief Minister of Assam has given a positive response and we do hope that we will be able to resolve this issue very soon. Uh, sir, while you were talking about this issue, there was also discussion on the tax collection, sir. So here I want to very, very carefully, uh, you know, tread this particular issue because it is very, very sensitive in nature. Uh, the reason I mentioned this, sir, is... Uh, precise reason why I had explained earlier also regarding the entire process of status quo which we have maintained, the stand we have maintained and the difference between Assam administration, Karbi Long District Council administration and the Meghalaya administration. We have to keep these two things in mind while I move into the tax collection part. As mentioned sir, we have decided to maintain status quo and as I said when we say status quo we mean the areas which are administered by whichever administration that status quo is maintained. We may not agree on which state or which area and the dispute and differences will continue, but as is where is basis, things will continue. Hence, the areas where these tax collections are taking place are definitely not in the Meghalaya administered area because that is something which uh, we have already, in fact, been very, very clear. We have bought broomstick under the agroforestry products and hence the question of taxation does not arise and in fact this decision of the MDA1 government has helped the farmers uh, to a very large extent. And hence the question of tax collection within the administered area of Meghalaya is not at all uh, allowed and if there is a case like that sir, we will immediately take action. The question here is where is this tax being collected? And I'm presuming, I don't know the exact location, is that these are in the administered areas by the Karbi Along Autonomous District Council. So wherever the tax collection is taking place, and or whenever there is a tax collection that comes towards Meghalaya's border, or comes into the administered area of Meghalaya, the report comes to us and immediately we swing into action. And that has happened in the past, and it keeps happening once in a while in uh, Khanduli area and other areas also, and in the last many months also this situation happened and in fact we reacted immediately and those uh, gates were removed. Uh, hence sir, the administered area of, uh, of Karbil Autonomous District Council is under their autonomy technically speaking and whatever taxation policies that the Karbil Autonomous District Council comes out with uh, officially those obviously sir, apply. Now regarding the illegal connection if any which the honorable member is indicating towards is something so that is not technically in the administrative jurisdiction as of now for us to comment on or for me to react to but definitely i could take up the matter with the counterpart of uh, assam with my counterpart the honorable chief minister of assam who can then further take up the matter with the karbilong autonomous district council 
So hence, sir, uh, this is, of course, an area of concern. And I, and I agree that people are being affected by this. Uh, it's not, uh, you know, very fair for people to be taxed in this manner. But as I said, sir, within the administrative area of Meghalaya, this is not permissible and this is not happening. It is most probably in the administrative area of, of Karbi along. And if there are such cases, we can take it up with the, the government of Assam. But for us to, for me to officially give any kind of, a, 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 you know, assurance on this matter uh, would not be possible, as I said, because we have maintained the status quo. And as I said, under the administrative jurisdiction of different autonomous councils or different state governments, we will take up the matter with the concerned authorities. Sir. Uh, th there is an issue, sir, regarding the div different developmental projects that were mentioned. Okay. Now, sir, let me also clarify to the House that uh, in almost every meeting that has happened, whether it is the Chief Minister's level meeting or whether it is at the Chief Secretary's level meeting, in multiple locations, uh, in different uh, 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 meetings, uh, the, the concept or the, uh, the issue of uh, development has always been addressed. And at large, the stand has always been that development works taken up will be done in consultation with the two deputy commissioners. This was in the, in the chief secretary's meeting way back in 2012, so on and so forth. So even in the meeting that was held in uh, uh, between the chief secretaries in 2019, that uh, uh, projects and schemes being implemented uh, will be shared by the deputy commissioners and accordingly uh, will be allowed to be implemented in a smooth and time-bound manner. Uh, similarly, so in the CM's meetings also, this is the stand that we have taken. And uh, uh, we had uh, discussed with uh, the Assam counterpart that especially when it comes to the central government schemes, schemes like the JJM, like PMGSY, that in that sense it is for the benefit of the people. And it's a development project funded by government of India. There is no reason why any of the states should have any objection or any issue with those particular projects. And hence, in most cases, in most cases, there is no issue, especially when it comes to centrally sponsored schemes and projects. Uh, I am I'm very much aware of what the Honorable Member from Ramrai had uh, mentioned. He has come and met me a couple of times on this issue. I have taken up the issue. There is some confusion because there was some regional uh, committee that had, I mean, the regional committee had brought out some issues regarding the developmental aspect, uh, which created a bit of confusion. We are sorting that matter out. And uh, JJM, but for the knowledge of this house and for the knowledge of all the members, that there is no circumstances under which the either of the governments or the administrations will not allow the implementation of centrally sponsored schemes like JJM and PMGSY and other electrification projects. And hence, if there is any issue in any development aspect of that, please do bring it to our notice. As I said, this is a very complex matter. There are different organizations, different officials who sometimes interpret some line in some other way. So those confusions could arise because of the sensitivity of the matter. But then the intention of both the governments is very clear. Uh, and there is no question of not allowing development projects to continue. We will continue them. And wherever these problems are there, wherever such issues are there, we will try to resolve them at the earliest. Many have been resolved in the past. We will continue to uh, resolve uh, any such issue that comes up in the future also. Uh, regarding developmental projects in general, like road connectivity and schools and other projects, and also our uh, border, uh, border development uh, uh, fund <coughs> that is there and the schemes that uh, we have put for interstate border development. Yes, sir, we are uh, working on that also. Uh, and uh, we need to understand that uh, when it comes to the border area development, it is not just uh, to be measured by the interstate border development fund. That is just a kind of a gap funding. But the other projects that are there through other line departments, if you look at all of those projects, there is a huge increase in the amount of money that we are spending uh, through the different line departments uh, for development of these areas. So hence, uh, the border areas are, of course, an uh, area which uh, have been neglected and in the past and need a lot of attention. And we are aware of this fact. 
and we are giving the necessary attention and we're ensuring that whatever and whichever way possible we are giving full support to ensure that the developmental activities do not uh, get hampered. Uh, one of the members had mentioned, <coughs> sir, about the fact that in uh, some of the sectors where we came to an understanding, this is a great example, by the way, sir, and I think the honorable members need to also just absorb this particular um, point that has been mentioned by the honorable, uh, honorable member here, that in this Tarabari sector, sir, if you recall, uh, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but about eight to nine villages, if I'm not wrong, uh, these were under the administrative control of Assam. And it is after the first phase of MOU that the Tarabari sector, the entire Tarabari sector, all the villages which were under the administrative control of Assam, and though all aspects of education, power, everything was provided by Assam. Once the areas of differences were resolved and the MOU was signed and it was decided based on the people's will that Tarabari sector will come to Meghalaya, immediately the Assam administration withdrew, which, which means that the discussions and the work has succeeded in one way. We succeeded in moving forward and resolving this long pending issue and Assam responded back by withdrawing all their administration from this area which was an uh, area of difference but agreed that it would go into Meghalaya and accordingly Assam withdrew. So this is a, a good example and a great example of the fact that we are actually moving forward in resolving the problem. So I think that is the first part which we need to absorb and understand. But coming to the second issue, that teachers are not there in this school, yes, uh, we are aware of it. And these things happen. Uh, it's a very swift uh, you know, response from Assam government. We didn't expect this kind of things to happen. But we are very much aware that there was an immediate withdrawal of teachers and other services there and hence the deputy commissioner and the other development, uh, the line departments are working on this and uh, we will be resolving this issue also very, very soon and uh, we'll ensure that all the necessary services, all the necessary uh, de de infrastructures that are required, we will ensure that uh, these things are taken up swiftly and I will keep the honorable <coughs> member also uh, informed about those particular uh, issues. Uh, sir, uh, somebody had mentioned about uh, ensuring that we have very clear guidelines on the implementation of development schemes. Uh, sir, the guidelines are of course uh, generic in nature and the generic guideline is that we will allow development to continue. But uh, as we all realize that these are uh, very sensitive areas, sensitive issues, people are sensitive about it and hence on a case to case basis we have to handle this. But more or less at large, almost every DC, DC who is involved in this discussion and involved in the areas of differences are very much aware that the central schemes should not be uh, interfered with and whichever state is implementing it, that they should be allowed, but necessary information can be sent to the Deputy Commissioner. So those are the broad guidelines with which we are working on this. and. Uh, we have seen, as I said, in many, many projects, I remember there was one PMGSY road in Langpi area which was of big concern uh, and after this uh, understanding and after the meetings that took place with uh, the Honorable Chief Minister and myself, uh, the Honorable Chief Minister of Assam and myself, we were able to resolve this issue and the work for that particular PMGSY work which was held up for a very, very long time finally started and I think the work is going on as we speak. And hence, things are moving, but as mentioned, sir, this is a complex situation. We cannot expect that everything will be smooth and, uh, you know, good in, in, a, in a short time. Things do take time, but I can say confidently that we are moving in the right direction. I can say confidently that the overall environment is far better than what it was before. I can say confidently that there's a slightly higher level of confidence and a sense of hope among the people that we will actually be able to resolve these issues and we'll be able to come to a conclusion. Uh, but as I said, in the process, being a complex problem, we do expect a lot of uh, turbulence and that is happening. Uh, and sometimes, uh, sometimes we, you know, we face a lot of problem because of the loss of lives. 
but uh, I can assure this house and every single member out here that we are very, very much aware and very, very uh, concerned about the challenges that our people are facing at the border area. Uh, but these are ch challenging circumstances also. So while uh, both the challenges of the people and the challenge of the circumstances, we are trying to move forward, keeping both the balance uh, in hand and ensuring that uh, the people are able to live in a peaceful manner. Uh, some of our members, sir, had mentioned about the overall law and order situation and overall security and safety. And absolutely, sir, this is of great concern to us. Uh, and that is the reason why, sir, the strengthening of the police force, especially the border outpost, has been done. Many old border outposts, the manpower has been enhanced. And many new border outposts uh, today have been created. Many police outposts have been created. And uh, from time to time, we are ensuring that whatever support is required in this uh, will be provided by us and we will ensure that more and more visibility of our police personnel is there to build up the confidence of the people. So we have uh, recruited uh, 996 additional police personnel because uh, precisely for the reason, sir, that these different outposts, different border uh, outposts, uh, though the posts were there, the sanctioned post was there, the recruitment had not been done and therefore they were vacant. And hence now, uh, after this 996 people are have been appointed we are going for a recruitment drive which is going to recruit 3108 more police personnel and hence these are already uh, posts which are in existing outposts and existing border outposts and hence once this process of 3100 more police force being um, uh, deployed employed these will be then deployed and uh, we should be seeing a much stronger presence of our police force at the grassroots level. You must be also aware, sir, that the, uh, the, the state government has gone for a very, very positive step where we have uh, started an engineering wing within the police department. And this uh, may sound very simple, but it actually gives the SP the necessary uh, freedom and flexibility to really invest and work in the uh, different outposts and uh, different uh, police stations and provide the necessary infrastructure without having to go through another uh, engineering wing or going to PWD or to any other agency. And hence, now with this kind of small reforms taking place, we are seeing the overall police force uh, strengthen and uh, more and more investment is also being made. Uh, sir, there were many other smaller issues that were brought out by different members regarding some electrification of villages, regarding some school issues, patrolling of police, uh, financial support to some of the people who had lost their lives, I mean their families who had lost their lives. Sir, all these aspects we have noted down and we will definitely uh, examine all of these uh, points that have been mentioned uh, by the different members. And once again, sir, to conclude, I would like to uh, assure the honorable members uh, that uh, this is an issue that is very, very important to this government. We have not just talked about it, but in our action also, we have uh, shown our intent to resolving this issue. It is not an easy issue to resolve. Uh, so I would like to take this opportunity to definitely thank all the members of the regional committees, the past and the present, sir, because without their efforts at the grassroots level, without their work at the grassroots level, uh, we would not be able to move forward in the way we have been able to do it. So, uh, so we must appreciate the work that has been done by the different uh, members of the regional committees. I thank them uh, for the work and the service that they have done for the people of the state. And uh, we will work as a government and as a team and as legislatures together to find a solution to move forward in the rest of the six locations. They are very, very challenging, sir. But as I said, while we move forward in that, we are always keeping the safety and security of our people in mind. We're keeping the different livelihood aspects in mind. We're keeping the different development issues in mind. And we're trying to ensure that these three areas are not disturbed 
while we continue our talks to resolve these border issues, sir. They're challenging, but we are giving it our best. As I said, we are in a very, very strong position because uh, we are getting a very, very positive response from our counterparts. We're getting a very positive response from the Honorable Home <coughs> Minister, Government of India, and the Assam Chief Minister. And therefore, as, a, as, a, as, as leaders, we are working together so that we are able to resolve this long pending issue that has been really affecting the people living in the border areas.